LCTR here and if you've been watching the channel for a while then you know how often we've laced up our boots and jumped back into some hell let loose. It is a testament to the development team that they've kept updating the game at a decent pace. It's kept growing and progressing in stature and standing so that just at the end of last month hell let loose 1.0 was released. So with this momentous occasion let's review what's new in hell let loose and ask is it worth playing? But first, in my normal full disclosure way, I want to say that the developers of Hell Let Loose gave me access to the game with a Steam key so that I could make videos about the game, just like this one. So 1.0, you only get one chance to properly release, and the Hell Let Loose team certainly summited that peak in their own way. Many other titles might look to polish out a stable version of their recent update, make everything shine and put on the game's best face. These devs took another route though, instead of refinement to the core game what we have here is an ambitious content drop of a whole new force in the shape of the Russian army, complete with new eastern front maps, Kursk and the equally famous Stalingrad. This choice to go the big update route is perhaps, and I'm guessing hoping, this is an indication that developers don't see this so much as the finish line for the title as much as a milestone, with many more updates and additions to follow in the years to come. We've had urban environments in Hell at Loose before, but nothing like the Stalingrad map. If you've been playing on one of the more rural or forest maps, then load into Stalingrad and it's like being transported to another planet. This isn't a city as you'd think of it, more of a landscape of at times abstract destruction with echoes of recognisable structures. There are more intact buildings in different areas of course, but every part of this world tells the tale of months of conflict. There's scale change too, the top left of the map feels like housing or other civilian areas, but pushed through across the train tracks that bisect the map and you find more industrial areas with grander scales. There are also historical references, something that the Hell at Loose devs have prominently pushed before. In this case, perhaps notably, the inclusion of Pavlov's house, an apartment building that featured in an almost four month long siege during the real Battle of Stalingrad. The kind of gameplay this creates is different too, Engagements can feel notably different to the more rural maps. The dense nature of the destroyed buildings can mean that people can often hide camouflaged in the litany of debris. It's fair to say that for many people this new map didn't run particularly well. I've had some pretty variable frame rates and some hitching. This video footage actually masks a bit how it actually felt to play. And I've seen some pretty low resolution ground textures used in places as well. Something that I previously praised the game for when they remade the Hurtgen Forest map. The good news is that the devs are already testing a patch on the PTE, which is the public test environment, which looks at Stalingrad map optimization amongst other things. I would normally pop in some footage of trying things from the PTE, but the devs actually asked for effectively a honor based NDA, so I won't be including video or other information on the testing done there. Hopefully though, things progress well and the performance improvements make it to the live game as soon as possible. Performance issues aside, I really enjoyed my time fighting on this new map, it's certainly very different to the long hedgerows that frequented earlier maps, and it's certainly one that I seek out to play on. And just quick aside to say, if you are enjoying this video, please do tap the old thumb up button, it helps me out with YouTube and discoverability and all stuff like that. And if you tap that subscribe button right now as well, I'd appreciate that too, thank you so much. The other new map is Kursk. And if you know much about World War II, and I wouldn't consider myself to be an expert at all, but even I know that Kursk is famous for being the largest tank battle in history. This does mean that this is a more hell let loose angle on that famous battle. We have tanks in the game of course, but nothing like the huge numbers that you might imagine when people use the name Kursk. Like Stalingrad, this is another different feeling map added to Hell at Loose's rotation, but that's where the similarities end, it really couldn't feel more different to a battle ravaged city. Out in the countryside we have rolling hills, long view distances that make moving out in the open to be a very dangerous business for troops, but strewn across the map are trenches and small installations to seek protection in. It means things like machine guns really come into their own when presented with open vistas, not to mention the obvious advantages that scoped weapons give to their users. I actually enjoyed this map way more than I thought I might initially. It does perhaps feel like it requires good people in management roles like squad lead to really work in this environment, but with the wide open style it can lead to combat being every bit as intense as the dense forest map might create. And while we are talking about new additions bought in 1.0, I should also talk about the new Russian army faction that's now in the game. Like with the other armies, each role has a uniquely made model and weapon accurately portray how they were historically equipped. 
so there's a multitude of new guns, and particularly of note, the famous PPSH, with incredibly high fire rate, it is a truly terrifying weapon to fight against at close quarters, and if I'm honest, it feels a bit overpowered to me, could do with a bit more recoil to make it more of a challenge to use at distance. Slightly different to other forces though, is that the model cosmetics that you can normally unlock by leveling the particular roles don't feature for the Russian army, instead the only unlockable main uniforms are through DLC. The Russian forces also have access to a new aerial bombardment in the form of the famous Katusha rockets. The new effect looks great, spawning off the side of the map and visually arcing through the sky on their unguided path to thunder into the ground. It looks really impressive, that famous noise is there, and to be on the receiving end can be very intense, though I wish it just had a little more audio impact on landing, more bass and thump to really shake your feelings. The core gameplay that has grown and evolved with the game is one that will be as familiar to players of titles such as Squadron and Certainty Sandstorm as it is different to people arriving from titles like Battlefield or even COD. This is a tactical FPS with milsim influences, movement isn't arcadey, there's implied weight to your character, and performing actions like climbing over obstacles isn't the fluid motion you may be used to. The weapon handling and hardcore damage model follows in suit, a single bullet can kill you if aimed correctly, time to kill is often incredibly short to almost be instant, and there's certainly no kill cam to let you know where you were shot from. If that sounds frustrating, then you're right, it often can be. You don't want to be lone wolfing in this game, as things like spawn points are player created, the real strength is in teamwork. Finding good servers, and again I point to clan servers to be where I first go looking, is paramount to enjoying your time in Hell Let Loose. You want people on your team who are happy to play leadership roles like squad lead and commander. Even if you're not in charge, you still have a vital role in communication of what you see and of following the orders you're given. You may be a small cog in a big machine, but every single one of those is important to keep the whole thing moving. I'd say it's not quite as hardcore as something like squad. The interface with team members marked gives things a slightly more gamery tone than something even more milsim. There are certainly elements of the community, and I think it's fair to say mainly from the original Kickstarter, that would wish that it was more towards that squad, postscript, and beyond the wire sort of design. There are some bugs that continue to affect gameplay though. One that I've talked about before is still actually in 1.0. It's where you're crawling prone, and then you go over an angle in the ground. It reorients your view abruptly and like without warning. I don't normally get motion sick in FPS games, but that can trigger it sometimes. Things like mounting machine guns to railings and fences, or even just patches on the ground, can be a persistent annoyance as well. Graphics is one area that Hell at Loose really shines over just about every other hardcore tactical FPS shooter. It really does look great, very much a modern title, and clearly something the developers put time and resources into getting right. It can be bright sunshine or dense foreboding fog, and although the weather isn't dynamic, rather tied to what game mode is being played, the result is something that often looks utterly believable. Also worthy of praise is the detail that goes into the world, not just the work done to try and replicate real locations or the weapons used, but also apparently the small details that can actually make or break a historically linked game like this. Set dressing is something I've talked about and complained about in other titles before. Simply put, if I walk into a house and the inside doesn't look like there's been people there, then it feels like a film set, not a real place. There's clearly huge amounts of effort put into locations that you might run through in under a second, but to have them detailed with pictures on the walls, tables, chairs, all manner of other civilian objects is essential to maintain the disbelief that this is a real place. It's not a completely clean slate though, 1.0 has introduced a new visual effect that I'd argue is the wrong direction for Hell at Loose. Previously, we've had what's mostly the rendering of a real 3D world. If you disable the UI, then the world you walk around in is trying to look as real as possible. The game part kind of lies in the UI veil that is drawn across it, you know, to give us players essential information, and to the game's credit, it does try and reduce that interface whenever possible. In this latest update, a change has been made to the way that spawn points look, to make them more noticeable and hence easier to find. Unfortunately, this has been done with a sort of ripple glow effect to the object's material, something that looks wholly out of place with this representation of a real world. Anecdotally, on their Discord and on Reddit, from what I could see, this seemed to be an almost universally unpopular change, but unfortunately it made its way to the live game. Here's hoping it's rolled back in a future update. 
Audio is one area that's also made significant strides during early access. There was a time when you'd say that this was the area that stuck out as not being of the same caliber as the rest of the game. Thankfully, that's no longer the case. But if I'm harsh and I think of it as a new player, then I'm left thinking that this is an area where work still needs to be done. Hell It Loose's sound effects are good, but they don't reach the heights of what's found in other titles such as Squad or Postscriptum or Insurgency Sandstorm. There's sometimes a lack of drama to what should be really intense events, especially when you're trying to create a realistic world. Often things feel like they aren't loud enough in comparison to other events, or that things lack impact or bass. For example, if I'm stood next to a squad mate in a trench and they fired their machine gun next to me, it should be all-encompassing. The huge pressure changes in the air should rob me of all other sound, and at the moment, that drama just doesn't come across. I'm glad that the sound design has made massive strides, and I'm excited to see how the devs can keep improving this side as the development continues. Hell It Loose is priced at £34.99 in the UK and a whisker under $40 in the US. It has also been discounted on Steam at times in the past too. For the game we have today, I'd say that's a fair price. It's a rounded experience, not perfect, but something that's solid and enjoyable and feels like a quality product from a studio that's shown decent development pace. 1.0 did slightly oddly feature cosmetic DLCs for the first time. I'm, I'm actually okay with this way of monetizing going forward. It doesn't affect gameplay, it doesn't split the player base, it's not tied to any gambling-like process, and it's not exorbitantly priced. It's basically three uniforms for £5. So why oddly? The timing just felt strange for me for people who backed the project a while ago. Finally, 1.0 was here, the thing they paid for was finally complete, but instead of that feeling, there's a, and here's some DLC if you want to look even cooler. I acknowledge that the devs need funds to carry on working on projects, battle passes are a thing for a reason, but it just didn't seem like the right time to introduce a new paid DLC to me, especially with the Russian army not having progression unlocked uniforms like the other armies do too. Oh, and as always, this is obviously bought on Steam, so keep in mind that you can try the game out for under two hours or under two weeks of ownership and still get an automatic refund if you decide this isn't for you. Player numbers are still healthy for Hell Let Loose. Indeed, they took a significant bump with 1.0 launch. Before the launch, you saw peak daily CCUs of the 4 to 5,000 player range, which is pretty reasonable for a tactical FPS title. But 1.0 saw an all-time peak high of almost 15,000 players, and that's still holding up well, as daily CCUs are now in the 8 to 10,000 range. Anecdotally, I've never had problems finding matches, and in fact, I'm often waiting for spots in my favorite servers due to the higher number of players around. So with all that said, let's answer. Is it worth playing? If you're into the tactical FPS genre, if you're into that Milsim style, and if you're looking for something in the World War II environment, then Hell Let Loose is arguably your number one choice, and I have no hesitation in recommending it. If you're new to the genre, then get used to learning a new way of playing. This isn't run and gun. Your power is communication and coordination. That is the heart of titles like this. There's going to be times of frustration, that the game needs teamwork and communication also means that when that's lacking, the experience can suffer. So find good servers with people who like to play these games in the way they're intended. When this game is played with like-minded people, it can really be a treat. There are moments of camaraderie and intense action. It may not be that quick game of deathmatch experience that other games offer, but Hell Let Loose has no wish to be that. And that's why it can feel so rewarding to play. It isn't perfect, I mentioned the audio, but I also think that there's a ways to go in how vehicles interact with the world to really give them the weight that they should feel like they have. But 1.0 isn't the finishing post for Hell Let Loose. The devs have already posted a 2021-2022 roadmap with all manner of improvements and additions. So I'm both happy that we got to this point in the project, but also excited to see how Hell Let Loose grows in the years to come. What do you think of Hell Let Loose? A veteran of the original Kickstarter? Are you new to the title or even the whole genre? Let me know your powerful thoughts and feelings by leaving a comment below right now. Like always, I'll be reading every single one of them. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave the old thumb up and tap the old sub button and engage the bell of information to let you know when the next video is ready. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support and I'll see you next time. Take care.